Hello and thanks for tuning in. My name is Brad Micklin. I'm the managing member and lead attorney for the Micklin Law Group, which is a law firm concentrated in men's and fathers' rights in divorce, custody, and family law matters, with offices in Nutley, Montclair, New Jersey. Today is a different type of tip. I've actually been focusing mostly on my uh, COVID-19 legal tips, but today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to do a two-part series on how to use email in litigation. So today's tip will be the first part about how to store and use emails from a basic perspective. I'm also the proud author of the best-selling book, How to Survive and Thrive When Divorcing a Narcissist. If you or anyone you know may be dealing with these issues, you can find this book on Amazon.com in both a Kindle and a paperback version. All right, so the first part of this two-part series is going to be just about storing and using emails. And as a side note, most of these ideas came actually because there are suggestions and things that I use in my own practice, not for litigation, but just for productivity. So while these should help you in uh, custody and divorce matters, it also may help you just overall managing your email and other issues that you have. So let's jump into it. So first, when it comes to how to best use and store email, I always recommend that you create internal folders. Now I use Outlook and I believe Gmail allows you to do this, but you can create, so where you have your inbox and you'll have your sent box and you'll have a delete box, you can create separate named boxes. So for instance, if you're in a custody matter, you might wanna have folders that are created that refer, uh, refer to parenting time or extracurricular activities or doctor visits or even copies of a calendar that you're keeping and notes that you can forward and shift all the information so when you have a conversation on, for instance, extracurricular activities, you can slide the email or the email chain into that specific folder. That way, could be years later when you have an issue that comes up on extracurricular activities, you can go to that one box, you can just right click and print everything, and all your messages will be stored as opposed to having to search through hundreds of emails on different topics just to come to the first one. So if you're gonna take that as a tip, I would also create ones for uh, domestic violence matters, for if you're unfortunately involved in those. Um, you may want to have communications that show both benign communications and hostile communications. You might want to have documents and videos and any kind of text messages that you may need as witnesses or as proofs for trial. You can forward those into separate boxes. You may want to have a witness list, a, a document folder. So. Again, every domestic violence matter is going to be different, but I think at a minimal, you want to have a folder for proofs, for witnesses, for documents, and for communications. In a divorce case, it's going to be a lot more uh, cumbersome, but I think you want to have communications about assets and debts, alimony, support issues, um, equitable distribution in general communications with your attorney, communications with your spouse. And again, the same rationale goes for all these cases so that when you have to focus on a specific issue, you don't have to go through what can be thousands of emails, especially if you have a high contest divorce, you can go right to the area and print and use exactly what you need, exactly when you need it. So the last tip about storing and using email is to have some kind of online backup. I'm a big fan of Evernote, um, Dropbox is great. I know a lot of people use uh, Google Drive. I like Evernote because in addition to having storage capacity, you can copy and send emails specifically to your, e your Evernote account. So if you're sending an email to your spouse, you can copy Evernote and the actual email will go into Evernote so you have it as a backup. But you really want a backup just in case, God forbid, you know, your computer dies and you don't have the messages. But also these services, the ones that like I mentioned, Evernote and Dropbox, they allow you to have access from other devices. So if you find yourself in court or in a meeting or in the middle of a trial, you'll have access not only to all the emails, but a much greater search capability than you'll probably have on the uh, email carrier that you're using. It also allows you to forward the messages. You can give access to any kind of court officer, or if you're using a therapist or a mediator, they too can get access. You can have it right there. So everybody will have everything that's needed. If you don't have an online backup, you're going to be locked into just hoping that's on your phone or have it to reproduce them by copying or by forwarding along. It can be very, very cumbersome. All right, so that concludes the first part of my email productivity for litigation. I hope the tips help you if you are in a custody, domestic violence, or divorce matter. 
I will also be doing a video probably next week on how to use these tips and practices in more of a tactical way in your litigation. So I hope this tip helped you. I hope the next one helps you also. If it does, please give a like and share the video so that others get to see it. You can also subscribe so that you get notices when I go online and you can message me with any tips you want me to cover, any topics you would like to see, and any questions you might have. Thanks and be safe. Feel free to contact me with any questions.